and Arturo de Cordova with J. Carol Nash and Mikhail Razumni in A Medal for Benny. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Irving Pitchell. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A good story is timeless, so it may take time to be appreciated. The incident behind tonight's play occurred after the First World War. But Jack Wagner, the writer who tried to sell the play to Hollywood, had no success. A few years ago, he happened to repeat the story to his friend John Steinbeck, whose enthusiasm whipped it up to date and led to Paramount's unusual and moving drama, A Medal for Benny, starring Dorothy L'Amour and Arturo de Cordova with J. Carol Nash and Mikhail Razumni in their original screen roles. I had the privilege of directing A Medal for Benny, and we filmed most of the action in a picturesque community a few miles from this stage. If you should visit it, you'd be impressed, as I was, not only by its atmosphere, but also by the colorful costumes of its women, the bright, gay fabrics that decorate even the humblest of its dwellings, so spotlessly clean. It's curtain time, and here's the first act of A Medal for Benny, starring Dorothy L'Amour as Lolita and Arturo de Cordova as Joe, with J. Carol Nash as Charlie and Mikhail Razumni as Raphael. <laughs> California coast is the town of Pantera. The new part of town is like any other small community, but the old part belongs to the Paisanos, Americans of mixed Indian and Spanish blood, a simple, friendly people who are, in reality, the original California settlers. One of these Paisanos is a young fellow named Joe Morales. Lolita! Lolita, it's Joe! Oh, a great thing has happened. Open the door. I told you not to bother me. Lolita, I gotta come in. Go away, I'm getting dressed. Then I will kick the door down a little. Stop banging. Oh, it's you. Hello, Chito. Look, Joe, would you like some advice? No. It's about her. Huh? For advice about my sister, Benny Martin always paid me five cents. For you, ten cents. Okay. Here's the ten cents. Now the advice. It's simple. Stop hanging around Lolita. Give me back my ten cents. You won't get your money's worth. Look, Joe, ever since Benny Martin went away, you've been trying to steal his girl. Hey, what talk is this? And what have you got from her? Nothing but slaps. And all you will get is more slaps. Believe me, I understand women. Mm, maybe so, but not Lolita. Lolita, best of all. I have lived with her for nine years. Well, what do you want? <laughs> Look, kiddo, you come with me, quick. Stupid. I have to go to work at Mrs. Kelly's house. Oh, but Lolita, I am the fish business with Benny's father, old Charlie Martin. Lolita, my love, I tell you, this is money in the bank. All right, Joe Morales. But remember, keep your hands to yourself. Oh, then you'll go? Yes, where to? Hurry, my life, to the ocean. The ocean. This is yours? This boat? Mine and old Charlie Martin. Jump on. Let me show you. Look. Oh, you see? A bell. And over here, fishing net. Even an engine. An engine of great power. Does it work? Oh, oh does it work? Joe, how much did you pay for it? Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars? Where did you get that money? Mm, never mind. Look, I will start the engine. Oh, listen to that. Hold on, Lolita. Here we go. Oh, what a wonderful thing is a boat with an engine. I can hold the steering wheel. Uh, now there's... Joe Morales, you wash your hands. It's Lolita. Joe, get away, get... No. What is wrong with one little kid? Only with you it is wrong. With who then? You know well enough. Ah, that Benny, that crook, that no account. I am promised to Benny. And when he comes sure. back... Sure, when he comes back. Do you ever hear from him? I got a postcard. <laughs> Eight months ago. One cheap little postcard with not even a picture on it. And Benny's father, that nice old Charlie. Does Benny ever send him as much as a dollar? No, nothing. 
So that is why you bring me out in the middle of the bay to take me away from Benny. It is like all of your dirty schemes. Sure, dirty schemes. For you, I would lie. I would steal. I would... Sure, for me. But for a house, for trust, for kids and a paycheck on Saturday nights, no. All right. Marry Benny. Marry anybody. It makes no difference. Joe, Joe, so the engine, look. Huh? It's tearing a hole in the bottom of the boat. The boat is coming apart. The engine, do something. The water is rushing in those stores. Shove the rowboat overboard. Quick before we drown. The rowboat? Oh, my lovely boat. Sinking beneath my feet. Hurry up, jump. We'll swim to the rowboat. Yes, yeah, oh, Lisa, yes. Yeah. Well, there goes the fish business. All is gone. Nothing but the ocean. Not even a souvenir I could take home for Charlie Martin. And what are you going to tell that poor man? I'll think of something. I must go to him right away. Slow Lisa, my stuff. Please row a little faster. <laughs> Formal party, Charlie. Oh, thank you, Rafael. But he's only a little red wine. Charlie, what's the occasion? Benny comes home? No, no Benny yet. The occasion, Rafael, is that pretty soon I am a rich millionaire. If you are a rich millionaire, Charlie, why is that Mr. Alviso, the landlord, so angry with you? Mr. Alviso, six months rent money he wants, he's a crazy fellow. But, Charlie, six months rent you owe, Mr. Alviso. And he will get his money because I am now in the fish business with Joe Morales. So I told Mr. Alviso, soon I'm going to buy this house to keep my goats in. Oh, Joe Morales, uh, the fish business. Well, if it was not for this wonderful fellow, Joe, my $60 rent money would now be in the pockets of that blood squeezer, Mr. Alviso. Uh, come in, come in. Uh, Joe, Lolita, well, just in time, our dear neighbors celebrate our good fortune. Uh, quick, Joe, tell him about our wonderful boat. Lolita already knows. <laughs> By golly, she is something, huh? Charlie. You gave Joe your rent money to buy that boat? Oh, you bet you life it was my rent money. Tell him, Joe. <laughs> Look, Charlie, I, uh, I have a little something to tell you. You and I, we have encountered an act of God in this fish pit. Oh, an act of God? Well, that is fine, Joe. No, Charlie, listen. Do you, do you remember the engine? Do I remember? <laughs> By golly, Lolita, you saw it, huh? Yes, I saw it. Well... The bottom of the boat fell out a little, and the engine sank into the ocean. Oh, well, that is not good. No, that is bad. Charlie, soon Benny will be home, and all your troubles will be over. Uh, when he was here, there was always a gallon of wine and a big fat chicken. And the little animals, how they used to love Benny. The little chickens, the little ducks. Oh, they used to follow him home. Aye, and he dog, too. All the way from town. Only expensive dogs follow him. Never less than $10 reward. Never. There are some people that say Benny was too wild. You know, like the time for his big trouble, you remember? Oh, well, Benny got so many big troubles. Which one? Last 4th of July at the fiesta. His big fight. Ah, that one. Who can ever forget? Miss Amigas, I have... Traveled. I have seen the world. I have been from San Diego to the to the Oregon border. I have seen fights, many fights. But I swear that never, never have I seen such a fight like that one. There she was, policemen and sheriffs on all sides. Fast, like tigers, they spring at him. Fast, there he swings, he clenches, he tears. The air is filled with little pieces of policemen. More policemen from the left. More policemen from the right. Policemen, policemen, policemen. And they got him. Now, now he's inside the jail door with the blood running down his noble face. Kalan, go the doors behind him. The chief of police pulls a gun, but Benny takes the gun away. And with his beautiful, strong teeth, he bites the barrel off and swallows the whole works like a two-year-old. <laughs> Mrs. Catalina, do I exaggerate? Every word is true. And that George, 
The cruel man to throw Benny out of town for a whole year. They could have put him in jail just a little, like all the other guys. Lolita, to have such a man as Benny, you must be very proud. Ah, Joe, where are you going? Benny, Benny. I come to drink a little wine and talk a little, and all I hear is Benny. Where am I going? I'm going to church to pray to St. Ben. What a fine young man you heard, huh? Such a religious fella. Good morning, Jake. Hello, Charlie. Jake, I come here to your saloon with a chicken. Maybe you're going to take the chicken for a gallon of wine, huh? Some chicken. What did I have? Well, uh... Me. <laughs> okay, Charlie, a gallon of wine. Thank you, Jake. Hey, friend of yours over there. Huh? Oh, Joe, uh, Joe Morales. Good morning, Charlie. Well, Joe, you look so sad. If it is about our fish business. No, that is sadness enough. But somebody shoved a knife in my heart. I do not feel good. Oh, a woman? Yes. Oh, poor, poor boy. With your permission, I will suffer with you. Uh, uh, Joe... This morning I got a letter. Please to read it for me. I am a man of not much education. I will read it to you. Charlie, there's money in the letter. Look, twenty-five dollars. What if it comes from Benny? No, huh? no, no. Listen, dear Charlie, I take pen in hand to say hello. Hello. And to tell you how sorry I was to leave town without paying you for the fine riata you made me. Anyway, here is the money. Your old friend, Oscar Espinosa. Oscar Espinosa. What an honest man. Uh, Charlie, this money, what will you do with it? I'm going to give it to Mr. Alviso for some of his rent. <laughs> you know, many times I lay awake all night just thinking of the nice things you have done for me. And I say to myself, Joe, I say, be patient. The time will come when you can do something for poor old Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> well... The time has come. Charlie, give me your money. I will be your bank. No, 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 the fish business. No, please, as a favor. All no. right, all right. One day you will be sorry. I can see you now, starving to death on the steps of Mr. Alviso's beautiful home, begging for some crumbs. Does he give me some? No, he kicks you into the street like a bundle of old rags. What a barbarian. And people will say, that is poor, hungry Charlie who wouldn't let his good friend Joe Morales be his bank and pay him good interest on his money. Uh, well, uh, Joe, you be my bank. Huh? <laughs> now, see? Here already is some interest. Not one dollar like the Pantera Bank, but five dollars. Take it, Charlie. It's for you. In advance. By, by golly, Joe, you are the best bank in California. <laughs> Now what do you want? Lolita, I have come to see you. All right. You have seen me. Oh, but I have brought you a present. Here, open the box. <gasps> a dress. And look. Ticket for the dance tonight. If you come with me, no, it will be... No, Joe. I am sorry, but... Somebody else will be sorry, too. Your sainted mother who is in heaven. My mother? Yes, last night I had a dream. She came to kneel by my bed. Joe Morales, she said... I am very unhappy here in heaven because my little girl is sad and lonely. Mr. Morales, she said, why don't you buy her a nice new dress and take it to the dance? Ah, oh, that is a lot of potatoes, Joe, such lies. Oh, hello, Joe. Hello, Chito. I want to talk to you. Let Joe alone. Hey, Lolita, my life, why don't you come? Show me one good reason. Any is the reason. When people are promised to each other... They are true to each other. And you think Benny's true to you, eh? Look at me, Joe Morales. And look at me plenty. If you were Benny Martin, would you be true to me? Yes. All right, then. Hey, Joe! Eat your supper. But Charlie says to tell Joe that he wants his $20 back. <gasps> oh, no. No, not again. Don't tell me you've robbed poor old Charlie again. Is it robbery to borrow a man's money and pay him good interest? This dress and the tickets. You take them back to you here. Get Charlie's money and give it back to her. Now get out. Get out. Oh, Lolita, look. Hey, Jake. Has old Charlie been here in the saloon tonight? Oh, he left long ago, Joe. 
<laughs> you know what he said? He's taking Benny's girl to the dance. I think I should hear for a while. Sure, Joe. Sure. Oh, hello, Joe. Hello. Don't you remember me? I'm Toodles Castro from Santa Marta. Sure, I remember. Like to buy me a drink, Joe? Oh, my heart is so heavy, there's not enough wine in California to float it. Ah, oh, you're no fun. I wish Benny Martin was in town. Huh? You know Benny? Are you kidding? I used to see him all the time. Oh, you did? See this ring? Benny gave it to me. So I know Benny. <laughs> you know, Toodle, already I feel better. How would you like to go to the dance with me? I can't. I'm driving back to Santa Marta in a little while, and besides, I haven't got a party dress. Maybe I'll buy you a drink after all. Jake, a little wine. Hey, what's eating you? Oh, I'm just so glad to see you. Toodles, come with me to the dance, and I'll give you a party dress. What do you say to that, huh? Well, that's different. Sure, I'll go. And if I wasn't so afraid of you, Joe, I'd say a toast. Go ahead. What toast? Ah, uh, to Benny. <laughs> <laughs> sure, to Benny and to Benny's girl, Lolita. By, by, by golly, Lolita, I'm some good dancer, huh? By golly, I bet you are nearly as good as that. Look. Uh, Joe, yes. Hey, Joe Morales. Good evening, Charlie. Also, all my friends, here's a young lady I should want you to meet. Oh, no. What a young lady, Joe. With such pretty legs, she ought to walk on her hands. Uh, Miss Toodles Castro, this is Benny's father. Ah, uh, thank you so much. And Miss Lolita Sierra. Mm. Hello. Mrs. Catalina shakes hands with Toodles Castro. She's a good friend of Benny's. Anyone who is a friend of Benny's is a friend of anyone. Oh, thank you so much. Mr. Rafael Luenga, Miss Rosa Perez, and Mrs. Pancho Dominguez. Oh, Miss Toodles, somewhere have I seen your picture? Sure, her picture was in the papers. Oh, yes, I remember now. She was Miss Santa Marta of 1941. Sure, the registrable queen. Down here, she has a little skirt made from celery. Here, parsnips. And here the art is shot. Uh, Miss Castro, you have known my Benny long time. Ah, to know that man for five minutes is to know him forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Benny, he's a lively one, huh? You're telling me. That is a pretty good-looking ring you have there. May I look at it? Oh, certainly. That was Benny's ring. Jerry, say, how did you know it was Benny? Because I gave it to him. That was my father's wedding ring. Wedding ring, huh? Well, maybe I should wear it on my left hand. Or maybe I should leave it where it is. Huh, Joe? See, Lolita? What do you mean, see, Lolita? Now, look here, Miss Vegetable, with all your parsnips. This fine young woman is the one Benny will marry when he comes home. Baloney. Come on, Joe. Sure, Toodles. Hey, my toes. Here, you better park it somewhere. Wait a minute. Huh? That dress she's got on. That is the dress you bought for me. <laughs> my life, look. You told me you did not want the dress. Well, I have changed my mind. I want it right now. Make her take it off. Take it off? And if you don't, I will. Lolita, por favor, no, no. I'm, I'm warning you. Oh, I'll go clean a fish. Let's breathe, Joe. Miss Castro. What? This. <laughs> All right, sister, you asked for it. Let go of my oh, hair. Slap your eyes out. Slap me, will you? Now, this back. Come with the ladies fight. Keep away from the refreshment, lady. Keep away from the refreshment, stand. Polita, look out. She's got the ball of Philly. Turun, no, no, not that. Don't stop. Oh! It's okay. She only hit jaw. Stop the fighting. Stop the fighting, please. Stop the fighting. Joe. Joe. Oh, go away. Joe, I should say I am sorry I beat up on Miss Poodle's Castro, but that is not what I'm sorry about. The fool I made of myself, all over with chili, my face, my hair. I have been in the ocean washing it off. I'm thinking now of drowning myself. <laughs> laugh like all the rest of them, you laugh. Joe, listen. Maybe the fight was lucky. How can a horrible thing like that be lucky? Joe, when you bring that, that Miss Parsnips to the dance, I, I was mad. But when you got in the way of the chili beans, I, I felt sort of sad and silly, like a woman in love. 
That's when I thought her good. You... You did? Sure. Oh. Joe, do you love me? Oh, I love you. Look, my life. You think all this time I have been talking deaf and dumb? Oh, come here. Now, do you know? Yes, I know. I think now even my grandmother, who has been dead for 40 years, knows. Joe, we better tell Charlie. The Charlie? We'll have to tell him. I owe him so much money, and now I take away his Benny's girl. Oh, but still, we must tell him now. Maybe if you called on Charlie alone by yourself, huh? No. You too. How can a man be so happy as I am and so unhappy? We tell Charlie. In just a moment, our stars will return in Act Two of A Medal for Benny. Producer, Mr. Irving Pitchell, returns to the microphone. Act two of A Medal for Benny, starring Dorothy Lamour as Lolita and Arturo de Cordova as Joe, with J. Carol Nash as Charlie and Mikhail Razumni as Raphael. Morales and Lolita search for Charlie Martin to break the news to him of their betrothal, the old man is ambling down the dusty road to town. Under each arm is a crate of chickens, and in front of him his small flock of goats. Halfway to town, he meets his friend, Raphael. What's the matter? You're not moving away. Moving away? From the friends that I love, Raphael? <laughs> no. To leave this place, I think I would die. Then, Charlie, where do you take the little animal? Well, this I'm going to tell you. Mr. Alviso comes early this morning. Oh, you tea spells out, he says. And he put a sign on the fence for rent out. Oh, Charlie, Mr. Alviso cannot do this. That is what I tell him. How a house can be for rent when I am living in it? But just the same, he hammers up the sign. Oh, I see, but the little animals, Charlie. Oh, these I take to the bank. You know Miguel, the janitor at the bank. He told me the things you borrowed the money with is 
particular is all... Oh, Carrasco. Cara Don't worry, Rafael. The bank gonna loan me some money, and Mr. Alviso will take down the sign. Come, little girl. Okay, you. Now, what is it you want? Please, mister, I would like, with your permission, to borrow $60. Brother, you'll have to see Mr. Mibbs, the president of the bank. I leave my collaterals in the back, my chickens and goats. Please, where is this Mr. Mibbs? You see that sign there? I, I, I think I forget my eyeglass a little. Today is Thursday, see? The sign says, luncheon meeting Pantera Pepsi's every Thursday. Club rooms above bank. Come up and shake hands. All right, I shake hands. No, not you. Mr. Mibbs is president of the Pepsi, too. Come back at 2 o'clock. Please, mister, what is Pepsi? It's a club, see? A club to boost the town. Oh. And if you just... Oh, go on. I'm busy. I'm so fellow Pepsi's. Let's put our shoulders to the wheel. Let's train every sinew and bend every effort to make time to the biggest little town in California. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Sexy Mibs. I'm sure all the boys here will... Uh, uh, hey, for Pete's sake, Herb, what's all that racket down there? Huh? Oh, some old geezer with a bunch of chickens and gold. In the bank of my bank building? In the parking lot? Ah, now, Zach, relax. Uh, we've got some mighty important things here to discuss. What important things? Well, the mayor was going to be here to tell And where that. is he? Your chairman of the program committee? Why hasn't he oh, showed up? Well, 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 Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry I'm late, boys, but wait till I tell you what's happened. Biggest thing in the history of Pantera. Mr. Chairman, can I have the floor? I got it already. What's this all about? This telegram. Boys, has anybody here ever heard of a fellow named Benny Martin? Benny no, Martin? No, no, I don't think so. Nobody here has ever heard of Benny Martin? What about you, Edgar? Huh? You're a publicity man. You claim to know everybody. Oh, well, that's fine. That's just dandy. Nobody even heard of him, huh? So what? So what? Well, I'll tell you so what. This Benny Martin, this fella from our own hometown, is America's number one hero, that's all. Hero? No, 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 no. See, it's from the United Press. It says the president has just awarded this Benny Martin the Congressional Medal of Honor. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What's this Benny done? Yeah, what's he done? Well, what'd he get the medal for? For killing Japs. This Benny, single-handed, killed pretty near a hundred Japs. Can you beat that a fella from our own hometown? Hey, do you get that, Mr. Bear? Hey, do you get it, Mr. Mibbs? No. A local boy. That's the angle. Oh, it's going to water tire. Yeah. Can't you just see it? Pantera, home of America's number one hero. Why, I'll plaster it all over the country. Radio, newspapers, newsreels. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, what a break. What we need is to get to a telephone right away. Somebody must know who Benny is. Okay, Sam, Edgar, Walter, come on down to my office. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs> Telephone calls and nobody's even heard of the Martin family. Pantera, the biggest nest of dim-witted schlemiels west of the Rocky Mountains. Now, now, Sam. And that includes you. Suppose this Martin family's left town. Why, Mr. Mitt, there hasn't been a family leave Pantera in two years. No, no, one moved in in 20. Mr. Mitt. What is it? Somebody here to see you about a $60 loan. Been here since noon. Uh, Mr. Mibbs, with your permission, I want to borrow $60 from the bank. Oh, go away, go away. Can't you see I'm busy? You heard what he said. Uh, but I have outside the collateral that... You don't say. What? You don't say. You don't say. What don't he say? Okay, Clem, goodbye. Who was it? It was the telegraph office. Clem says they're burning up the wires. Clem says... All right, morning. but what? Who? Newspapers, news agencies from them down near every town in the good old USA. What a collection of turkey heads. Suddenly we've got a hero. And in a town the size of a gopher hole, nobody's ever heard Hello. of him. If anybody finds this out, a fine bunch of rummies we're going to look like. Hello, Les. Hey, fellas. Les says there's some martins over in Bakersville. Bakersville? Bakersville. Why, you poor cookie. If Bakersville claims this boy, that's the finish. Hello, Les. Never mind. Why, we just as well pack up this community and move it over there. Come in. Uh, Mr. Mid, just a Get little... out. Oh, what a day. A simple little thing like... I thought I told you... Oh, Herb, come in. Oh, Mr. Mid. Mr. Mid, I just got a line on him. This martin fella. They got his whole record at the police station. Police station? Yeah, yeah, he's a guy they run out of town. Danny Martin. Oh, we get a hero, and we find he's a guy we ran out of town. We got a million-dollar break for the merchants of Pantera, and for heaven's sake, what's going on here? Adam, 
Adams. Yes, Mr. Smith. Don't pick him in the back. Get him, Mr. Smith. He insisted on bringing them in. And Mississippi St. Bernard Hogg would just post in my office. Please, Mr. Mid collateral. George, did you find him? Did you find Charlie? No, not yet, kiddo. Not all day. But pretty soon we find him, huh? George, why the big smile? Oh, kiddo, I'm so rich, I'm sick of my stomach. Look, $60. As soon as I find Charlie, I give it all to him. George, you didn't... No, no. Do you remember Pancita Jack, the one I bought that boat from? Well, I sold the boat back to him. But the boat is at the bottom of the bay. He doesn't know. He does know. He felt so bad about it, he is now in the hospital a little. <laughs> Joe. Joe, if it is all the same, let me have the money for Charlie. <laughs> sure, kiddo. Uh, you give it to him. And no more schemes. No more, Lolita. Then I can tell you for sure that for me, you are the only one. Because like this, there has never been anyone else. Not even Benny? Not even Benny. Oh, Joe, we have got to tell Charlie about it. Uh, sure. It will be bad news for him. He has always been crazy for me to marry Benny. But when we give him back his $60, he will not feel so bad, huh? Hey, Lolita, I got a big surprise. Please, Joe, I know your big surprise. No, not this one, you don't. I got a job. You, huh? Hey, I went to see Mr. Gonzalez, the big contractor. He says, Joe, come to work. Oh, Joe, give me a <laughs> Hey, You betcha, kiddo. Now, come on. Maybe by now Charlie is home again. Who is Charlie? It's Joe and Lolita. Oh, I, I think maybe it is Mr. Alviso. Charlie, all day we look for you. Well, I, I have been in the town. Tomorrow night I will not even have a roof to put my head under. Oh, I wish Benny was here. Uh, Charlie, uh, we have two important matters to discuss with you. Well, Joe, is no use. I got no money. Mm, that is what you think. Here is matter number one. Sixty dollars from Joe. Huh? Six? My rent money? Joe, you are a wonderful fella. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, the second matter you, you may not be so happy about. It's about Lolita, Charlie. Uh, Lolita and I, you see. Hey, that noise! Policemen, siren, out the window, look. So many automobiles, they are coming to this house. Uh, policemen? Uh, Charlie, when you go to town today, you kill Mr. Alviso, maybe? No, no, Joe. Uh, my goats, I think, they smell of the bank a little. But, but with so many cops, it must be Benny. And all the neighborhood. Charlie, they are all coming here. Don't open the door. Don't open the door. Mr. Martin, uh, this is Mayor Smiley. If Mr. Alviso is send you, I got the rent money. Uh, please, won't you let us in, Mr. Martin? No, no. Lolita, these are not angry men. With Benny, they always kick down the door a little. It's about your son, Mr. Martin. You see? Uh, Benny didn't do it. Uh, Charlie, uh, it's you, you. Open the door. Oh, this is very bad. What is it? What do you want? Uh, hey, boys, uh, keep them out of here. Uh, close oh, that door. Uh, close the door. No, no, please. These are only my friends. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Catalina and Pamphilio. Uh, come in, Rafael. Come in. All right, just a few, but no more, please. Uh, now then, uh, speaking for all Pantera, I want to tell you how proud we are of your son. Proud? Proud of, of my Benny? Please, what he has done. You mean you don't know? You haven't heard from the War Department? Please, mister, what for the, the War Department one who talked to me? But, Mr. Martin, your son's a hero. I'll say he is. He killed more than a hundred chaps all by himself. <laughs> Benny? Benny's a soldier? He sure wasn't picking spinach. But, but by golly, I, I bet he's a good one, has you? And the president has awarded him the nation's highest tribute, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Sir? Hey, uh, everybody, what do you think? My Benny is a hero. From the president of the United States of America, he got a great big gold medal. By golly, I think we all got to have a drink on that. Huh? Oh, uh, Mr. Martin, uh, have you got any pictures of Benny? Pictures? No, no, no. Ah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Come here, here, see, on the wall. 
my sainted wife. There in her face is my Benny for you. Oh, what a one. Just to look at him makes you feel good all day long. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it does. Oh, and, and this young lady, this is Miss Lolita Sierra, the one Benny is going to marry. By golly, Lolita, with his medal, all the girls in town is going to be after that soldier boy. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, when is my Benny going to bring this medal home, huh? Uh, Mr. Martin, uh, Charlie, I, well, we all sort of figured that you would have heard about it. You see, the medal was awarded posthumously. Like all right, all right. I, don't, I won't care how he got it, but, but when he's coming home. Charlie, Benny is not coming home. Huh? Why not? He's in jail again. Benny is dead. No. No. I... He's, he's dead. Think we'd better be leaving now, boys? Uh, Charlie, we'll be back with a cameraman or two later. You know, to get some informal shots. I, I am home. Benny. Dead. Okay, everybody. Let's clear up. Oh, about that loan, Mr. Martin. I am sorry to bother you, Mr. Mead. Bother? Why, bless my soul, it's no bother. I, I got my money. You give it to me. Well, good night, Mr. Martin. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Joe. Huh? Everybody is gone now. Charlie is alone. Maybe we should go back in and see him. Charlie has had enough for one night, I think. I guess you're right. What is the matter, Joe? I'm scared. Scared? Scared of what? Benny. But he is dead. Yes, Benny's dead. Benny, who is always in trouble, his girl I can take from him. But a hero's girl, a hero who is dead, even from the grave he comes between us. How can I marry you now? Present Act Three of A Medal for Benny in a moment.
is Act Three, starring Dorothy Lamour as Lolita and Arturo de Cordova as Joe, with J. Carol Nash as Charlie and Mikhail Zumni as Raphael. <laughs> Twenty-four hours, the hometown of a great hero has wallowed ecstatically in the lush pastures of nationwide publicity. The name of Pantera suddenly has become known from coast to coast, and business booms as reporters and visitors flock to the precincts of valor. In the Pantera Bank, surrounded by his wild-eyed cohort, Mr. Mibbs is on the telephone. Yes, Senator, of course, Senator. Do I know the Martins? Oh, yes. Oh, they call it uh, Martin. Fine old California family. Spanish land, grants and everything. Huh? Why, Senator, only yesterday Benny's father was doing business right here in this bank. Yes, sir. A pillar of the community. No, not at all, sir. Goodbye. Oh, what did he say? Yeah, what shut up. Uh, what, 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 what? Uh, one at a time. All right, Mayor, what about Sacramento? Just you listen to this. The governor and an army general are coming to Pantera. What? Day after tomorrow, they're going to present the medal to Denny's family. Just enough time for us to do it upright. All right, Edgar, where are those pictures? Hey, you Mr. Mid, take the pictures of the house. Oh, no, that's awful. That's a heck of a place to take the governor and the general. Well, don't stand there with your mouths open. What are we going to do? Well, while they're here, why not take Charlie to another house? Hey, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Fine. George, that's it. Walt. How about that house of yours? Huh? Well, okay, Chief, but it isn't furnished. Okay. Herb, you'll take care of that. Uh, me? Furniture? Well, what are you in the furniture business for? Oh, yeah, but I've been... No, uh, but... Uh, this bank's got your note, hasn't it? You get the place fixed up. Get the old man into it. Fast. And, Red, as soon as he's in, you grab your camera and get and knock off some pictures. Okay, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Now we get a picture of you standing right, uh, right over there. In here, Mr. Love. That's it. That's the idea. Oh, hold that camera a second, Red. Uh, Charlie, uh, let's take off the skimmer, huh? Uh, what is the skimmer? He means your hat, Charlie. Oh. Yeah, just relax, Charlie. You, you know, sort of nonchalant. Huh? Well, think of it this way. Look out over this whole countryside and just imagine that your ancestors owned all of it. They did. Oh. Hey, I got it. Just the thing. Red, where's that sombrero? Right here, Edgar. Please, as a favor, no. Why, what's the matter? It looks fine. Maybe it does to you. But if Charlie's friends saw him in that, they would laugh. A laugh? They would throw rocks at me. Big ones. Okay, take it off. Go ahead, Red. Shoot it as is. Hold it, please. I got it. That's all, Charlie. Thanks. Well, come on, Red. we got to get back to headquarters. Charlie. Come in the house, and I will fix your supper. Uh, but such a big, new, beautiful house to have supper in, Lolita. You are not going to be lonely here, are you? No, oh, I, I don't get so. I got so many rooms. <laughs> Pretty soon, Lolita, for the little animals and the goats, I got to fix the place. Charlie, you can... Automobile. Mr. Mills, maybe. And the police. No, no, I know those automobiles. My golly, Lolita is our friend coming to visit us. Welcome to cheer you up a little. Oh, it's so good. Please to go inside. Oh, Charlie, some lovely things oh. to bring your fine oh. You're too kind. Everybody, please to come in. Charlie. Everybody. I want everybody to tell me truthfully. Tell me, do I look like an imbecile? Well, Raphael, to me, you look the same as always. Then please do not ask me to tell you the thing. I have been with Mr. Mead and his people. Please do not ask me, or you will say my brains are scrambled like a dish of old eggs. Well, what is it? No, it's impossible. Please. I just say, well, Okay, I will. <clears throat> For two days now, like Jonah in the belly of the whale, I have been enclosed in the Chamber of Commerce. They give me a job. Just imagine to yourself, typewriters making noises like chameleon woodpecker. The telephones are ringing. Salin Kalang, Salin Kalang, hello. New York, Mr. Nibs talking. Salin Kalang, Salin Kalang, hello. Hello, Sacramento. This is Mr. Mead. Hello, Mr. Governor of the state of California. 
Pleased to meet you. Yes, yes, very well. All right, come, Papa. Clink along. Hello, this is Mr. Lobkin. Hello, Mr. General of all the Army of the United States. Sure, with all your bullets and your tanks. Pleased to meet you. Sure, and with all your bands. And all for you, Charlie. And by golly for you, Tuvalu. <laughs> Charlie, please to give me your hand. My hand? Chocolate. I'm honored to shake hands with a fine old California family and the pillar of the community. It's a great honor to know a man with so many fine Spanish grants. Who says that? Mr. Mib. What is Spanish grant? That I do not know. Come, everybody. Come, everybody. Come to the dining room. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. the sea. They all keep saying, Joe Morales, you're going to lose your woman. What is the matter with you? Joe, my arm. You're hurting me. We gotta get away from here. Far away where nobody knows her. Now before it's too late. Joe, you don't know what you are saying. Look there in the house. That old man. Do you want to break his heart? What do you want to do? Break ours? But Joe, this will not last forever. It will be forgotten, and in a little while, we will be together for all. A little while. Even tomorrow it may be too late. I feel it here. I tell you, the world, the outside, is taking you away from me. For you, Joe, with me, a hundred years will not be too late. Now come into the house. And be patient and wait like I tell you. Come on. Uh, Lolita and Joe, come in. Look, look who has just come to see us, Mr. Lovekin. Yes, indeed. He's back again, Lolita. Just checking up on Charlie, old boy. Is something wrong? Wrong, no, sir. I just dropped around to give Charlie a schedule. We just this minute got it set. Now get this, Charlie. Tomorrow, the big doings where they give you the medal is at the ballpark, 11.30 sharp. Means me being here with a car for you at 11. You'll be ready, won't you, Charlie? You know, all shaved, shined, and slicked up. Uh, Lolita, uh, you won't let him uh, leave without a necktie, will you? Wait a minute, Mr. Lovekin. Tomorrow you will not have to be ashamed of Charlie. No, not of his friends either. Atta girl. And then Charlie, after the ceremony... Good night, Charlie. I am glad I came, but I got to go now. Oh, so soon. I, I hope you're going to come and see me many more times. Uh, goodbye, Charlie. And thank you so much for the lovely chair. Oh, it is nothing. Oh, oh this wonderful chair. I shall not have to put new legs every time my old woman sits down. Charlie, for gosh sake, you can't give him that chair. Why can't he? It belongs to Charlie, doesn't it? Oh, what it matters if I give a friend a little chair? <laughs> I got so many now. Well, you see, Charlie... This house, all these things, they are Charlie's, aren't they? Well, it's just like I told Charlie. Answer me. I guess not. Then why did you bring Charlie up here? Well, uh, well you... Uh, you take where you folks live. You know, I mean, pictures of it plastered all over the country. Well, it might look kind of funny. You know, the father of a hero. Folks might get the wrong impression. Uh, uh, please, Mr. Lovekin, give to it no importance. Uh, Lolita and Joe think a little. Where I ever would find the money to pay the taxes on such a place like this? Uh, Mr. Lovekin, please, to Mr. Meebs, give my remembrance. And from our hearts, Thanks for the honor he has done for us and and my son. Oh, forget it, Jolly, forget it. It works both ways. By tomorrow, there'll be 5,000 outsiders here in Pantera, every one of them good for three bucks. A lot of nickels for hot dogs and hamburgers. That's just chicken feed. This medal for Benny is going to do for Pantera just what the quintuplets did for Canada. No, sir, Jolly, you don't owe us a thing. You get the glory, we get the gravy. Wait, Mr. Lovekin. Benny was a wild boy. But even Benny would not think to do a thing like this. Never he would use the bravery and the beautiful metal to sell a lot of hot dogs and real estate. 
No, even Benny would not do that. Come, Lolita, everybody. Now we will go home. But, Charlie, you can't leave. Please, as a favor. But there'll be 5,000 outsiders here tomorrow. Mr. Lufkin? Hey, yes. Go away. <laughs> Hello, Edgar. Yes, Mr. Mibbs. Edgar, where are you? I'm calling from the fish house, Mr. Mibbs. Edgar, maybe you don't know, but for 45 minutes, the governor of this state and the lieutenant general have been standing on the steps of the city hall. And for 45 minutes, we've been listening to that lousy band. Now, where is Charlie Martin? Mr. Mibbs, he says he's staying in his house. Oh, if you jimmy this thing up, I'll nail your ears to that fish house door. What, Mr. Mibbs? You blabbermouth idiot shooting off your face last night. What's on this? <laughs> Well, Mr. Mibbs, where is he? Where is Charlie? Well, I'm very much afraid Charlie isn't coming. What do you mean, isn't coming? Well, you see, General, there seems to have been some misunderstanding. Why, we even had a special car to bring him here to the city hall and then take him to the ballpark. Ballpark, my eye. Where does the man live? Well, you see... Uh, where does he live? In Slewtown, General. Well, let's go to Slewtown. But you can't go there. And what about the parade and all those troops you brought to town and the tanks? Why can't I go to Slewtown? General, it's nothing but a bunch of shacks. It is, huh? Well, you should have seen where I came from. Come on, we're going to Slew Town. But the parade! The parade goes to Slew Town, too. Uh, Lolita, come, come here, look. Soldiers, hundreds and hundreds of soldiers. Charlie, the army, they are coming to you. I think now it is all right if you open the door. Uh, yes, please. Uh, but the whole army... Mr. Martin, the President of the United States has directed me to present to you, in the name of the Congress of the United States, the Medal of Honor, awarded to your son, Benjamin Martin, for services rendered in battle above and beyond the call of duty. Please, would you now I can say something? Yes, Mr. Martin. I... I, I don't talk too good. Benny came from this house, and Benny is the hero. I, I know there can be heroes from all kinds of houses, too, because a man is only what he grows out of, his family, his friends, and his house. Uh, maybe uh, that is a good thing for the whole country. Maybe it is good she must depart and for the life on all kinds of people, and boys like my son, and and women like their mothers, their wives, and, and, and their sweethearts, like this girl here, Lolita. Benny is not dead. He is alive in her heart. Mine, too, for always. Thank you. As the command passed in review. Charlie, Charlie. Yes, Lolita. As soon as it is over, Raphael says we must go to the railroad station. Railroad station? Yes, he says Joe is there. Joe wants to see us. Joe is going someplace? I don't know. Oh, Charlie, please come with me. Sure, oh, Lolita, I come. That good job I got with Mr. Gonzalez, yesterday I quit. Joe. I got another job, Lolita. Charlie, everybody. I'm now in the army. Joe, even before you're drafted? But why, Joe, why? Uh, well, Joe, and I know why. To get revenge for Benny and the other fellas, what do you think? Uh -huh, Joe. Bravo! Look, kiddo, all that money that old Charlie will get for Benny's insurance... Put it in a good bank for him. It is too bad that my bank is now busted. <laughs> Go on, Lolita. Give the soldier a big kiss. Sure, kiss him for good luck. Oh, you bet you my life. Hey, hey, too much luck is plenty. Look, my life. I was always twice as good as that thing. I'll come back with two medals. 
Oh, sure you will, Joe. Sure you will. Goodbye, kiddo. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Raphael. Goodbye. Goodbye, Joe. Oh, he's such a wonderful fellow. Charlie, he's got to come back. Sure, Joe. He's got to. Well, he will come, sure, Lolita. And you know what I think? Someday, you and Joe, maybe, huh? Yes, Lolita. I think that would be very good. of your radio theater is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service.